Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. My name is Marcio. In this video, we're gonna do a deep dive on the Google Cloud Computing Engine. And what it is the Computing Engine? The answer is quite simple. The Computing Engine is the part of Google Cloud that allows us to create virtual machines or virtual computers. We can simply go to the console or use any other tool to create new computers or new instances that will serve our applications. For example, we can create a new instance to host a database or to host a new application or to do whatever we need to do to deploy a new workload for production. Managing instances and managing virtual machines with Google Cloud is quite easy. I'm gonna go now and deep dive on the console to show you guys a demo on how things work. Let's go. Just taking a look at the console here, I have set up my account previously and I created this project here, which is the YouTube demo project. So this is the project I'll be building all the stuff we'll be doing here. Google Cloud has this hyperlink here, which is a quick access to create a new VM and we can also so click here on the left hand side on the menu and go to compute engine and find the VM instances option. So it's going to click and then it's going to open the computing engine homepage. There are lots of things happening here. There are so many options. I'm not going to go in details in all of them, but I'm going to give you guys the most common ones and the most useful ones for beginners. So you guys can start exploring all of its capabilities. First of all, here is the first option VM instances. So this is the list that will appear and that will capture all of your instances that will be running or stopped. After that, we have instance templates. Those templates, they are kind of a recipe on how new machines, they should be configured. Let's say the amount of memory, the amount of disks. So after we create this configuration or create this recipe, we can simply create new machines based on that template. Next stop is the salt tenant nodes. Sometimes, our applications or our workloads, they need to have some more isolation and they should not share the same hardware with other applications or other companies. So this is the option for that. We can also create machine images. We can simply create a new VM, do all the configuration we want. Then we can close that image and then that image will be ready to be reused later on. Computed user discounts, we can buy in advance, complete in power, and then Google will give us some discounts. And other important things here are disks. We can create new disks to serve our instances. We can take snapshots. We can have images as well. We can have instance groups. And there are lots of other stuff going on in here but they are not that important right now. So this is the basic stuff we, we have in here for creating and managing virtual machines. Now I'm going to create a new virtual machine and then we'll start making our hands dirty and doing some cool stuff. Let's go. Let's just click here, go back to VM instances and let's create an instance. I'm going to give this instance a new name. A cool thing here is that Google Cloud also gives us some estimations on the price. So for example, for this instance here, I should pay $28 per month if I leave it running 24 hours. Once you sign up for Google Cloud, we get around $300 dollars for free as you guys can see here on the on the top and yeah it's more than enough for us to test our stuff to explore and do whatever we want to test the platform next step here is the region and the zone so this is where the data center is physically located so we can choose in which city or which region we want to create that virtual machine i'm just gonna leave it here on the default it's gonna be las vegas us west 4 and the zone us west 4b we can also choose the purpose of that machine for example here you have a general purpose machine so this will give us lots of options here on the kind of CPU we can pick and these virtual machines here, they are, as the name says, for general purpose. For example, for deploying a web server or for deploying a RESTful API or a database, could be anything. And they also offer more specialized options. For example, computing optimized, they say high performance machine types for computing intensive workloads. If your workload needs a lot of processing power, this will probably be the perfect use case. Another option is memory optimized. Say we need a lot of memory and we have an in-memory database, for example. So this could be a good option. And we can also have a GPU optimized virtual machine. Let's say we want to go and mine crypto on the cloud. So 
this could be an option. I'm just going to go back here to general purpose because for our example, that's going to be more than enough. We can also choose how many vCPUs we will have and how much memory. I'm just going to leave it here on the default. It's going to be two vCPUs and four gigabytes of memory. Another important part here is the confidential VM service. We can ask Google Cloud to give us an extra layer of confidentiality. We can also deploy a container on this virtual machine. Let's say we have our application and we package that application using Docker, for example. We can simply deploy that Docker container with our virtual machine. Other options here is to change the boot type. There are a few options here to choose the boot disk, for example. We can choose the operating system. Uh, we just leave as Debian, but there are many options here. CentOS and Deep Learning Linux, Fedora, SUSE, Red Hat, and so on and so forth. Likewise, for the disk type here, there are Balanced Persistent, Extreme Persistent, SSD, and Standard Persistent. So these disk types, they will give us either more throughput or less throughput, depending on the kind of workload we need. I'm just leave here on the default. The next step here is for API access, which means which are or what are the APIs this virtual machine will be able to access on the Google Cloud Platform. There are a few options here. We can simply give it a default access, which means it will have the full read-only access to storage and service management, write access to stack driver logging and monitoring. So all the basic stuff uh, we'll leave here on the default access. So read-only access to cloud storage and read-write access to logging on stack driver. We can also give it all full powers, which is not recommended. And we can also choose and pick whichever API we want to give access to that VM. In this case, I'm just going to leave it as default. And next step here is firewall. I'm going to allow traffic. So HTTP and HTTPS for our virtual machine. And last here is advanced options. There are lots of options here, which I'm not going to go in. And we can try to create a new instance here, but it's going to tell us there is an issue. And this is something that they just changed in the console. They ask us to change the on host maintenance, which the default was to simply terminate the instance. But that's not good because if you have something running there, they want to do some maintenance on that physical host. So our application or our workload would be simply vanished. The idea here is to migrate to another VM instance. So whenever they want to do some maintenance, they simply migrate our workload to another instance and then they do whatever they need to do in there. And that's all we need. We can simply now hit the create button and it's going to take a little while to create this new instance. I'm going to see you guys whenever it's ready. Okay, it is ready now. We have our first instance here. And as you guys can see, it has an internal and an external IP address. So the external IP address will enable us to access that machine or access a web server that will be installed on that machine. For example, if I click here, it's probably not going to bring anything because there is nothing configured yet. And yeah, it's HTTPS and I can even try HTTP. There is nothing there yet. Now, let me close here and let me SSH to this virtual machine. It is a Linux virtual machine. And there we go. We are there. So I can simply list my folder. That's the folder where I am, my home folder. I can take a look at the information about the disk space. This is my file system here. And let me clear my screen. Now I'm going to install a new web server here. I'm going to install Apache, which is a very popular web server. And then we'll be able to access that web server from outside Google Cloud Platform. Let's go. First thing here is to update all the Debian packages. So sudo apt update. And now it's going to update all the packages to the latest ones. And it shouldn't take that long. Yeah, it's done now. Next step here is to install a patch. So let's install, install a patch too. Yeah, it's going to ask us for permission if we want to continue. That's yes. And it's going to install a patch. There is another way of doing that. We can simply write that command. Um, sudo apt-get install apache2 space dash y. Then it's gonna auto confirm for us. And we are done here. We have installed the patch. Now let's take a look if a patch is running properly. So it's gonna be sudo system control status a patch. And yeah, it's gonna tell us that it is running and the patch is enabled. So 
it should be good now. Let's try again accessing here the web server via the IP address. It should, yeah, it should complain about the HTTPS, but if you go via HTTP, there we go, we have a patch installed there. As you guys can see, it is quite simple and quite easy to create a new virtual machine and even SSH to that virtual machine via the Google Cloud Console as I have just done here and we simply have a session for that virtual machine. It's totally secure, it is safe because it goes via our credentials because we are logged in to the console and it knows who we are and all the access we have. Let me clear here, we can do many other things. We can install other stuff. For example, uh, it has Python here, if I'm not mistaken, Python 3. We can also install Golang or any other tool that we want or even install MySQL and have that full LAMP server here running our application. This is all we have for this tutorial in this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Please do not forget to like my video, subscribe and also click on the notification bell so you won't miss any of my videos. And I see you guys next time.